Good afternoon, YouTube. It's been a while, but um, just wanted to do a video about phono preamps. Now, um, I get a lot of questions on YouTube, uh, just general kind of basic uh, turntable and vinyl questions. And so I'm kind of trying to go back and think about things that questions that I had when I first started uh, collecting again. And um, this was probably the first thing I ran into the first uh, issue, I guess you could say, is the phono preamp. So I got a turntable, I plugged it into my stereo, and I couldn't hear anything, and I didn't understand why. Well, one, my stereo at the time did not have a photo uh, input. Uh, usually if your amplifier or stereo has a phono input, it's going to have a phono preamp pre-installed. A lot of the um, turntables that you buy in stores right now, like uh, Sony has a uh, USB Crosley uh, players, if you want to hook those up to, they usually have speakers built in as well, but you can hook those up to a stereo. I believe the Audio Technicas, all of those um, newer turntables that are coming out right now, almost all of them have built in preamps. But let's say your, your parents give you their old collection and they give you their old turntable and you plug it in and you don't hear anything. This is going to be how or what you need to do to get that fixed. Now, I have um, this professional moving magnet preamp. Uh, this one cost me about $49.99. Um, it's a little bit of a step up from the Pile Pro that I had before. Uh, I'll put a link to actually both of them in the comments below because um, you know the Pile Pro is probably the best preamp for the money to get you kind of off and going. I believe it was uh, between $15 and $20. And it sounded good. It didn't have any interference or anything like that. But I'll get into that a little bit later. Right now I'm more concerned with getting getting you set up so you can listen to your albums and you can have uh, kind of start getting to enjoying them. So I have a Yamaha stereo here that's from like a late 90s model. Um, it does include the phono preamp right here. So all I have to do is now when I, I have a standalone Technics turntable. It's from like the late 70s. So my... The plugs coming off of that look like this. I had a stereo, red and white, and then I had a ground cable. Now, nice thing about my stereo is I have a ground cable right here. I just stick this guy right here like that. And then I just plug in my stereo like this. Switch it to the phono option on the stereo, and voila, I can enjoy my albums. Now, you want to make sure this ground is plugged in and snug, because if this is loose, um, some, in some cases you may not be able to listen at all, but, or you're going to get like a very loud interference or humming sound. So you want to make sure that's grounded. It's really important because it will affect the quality of your audio. So let's say you don't have a, a phono input on your stereo. You know, you're probably looking at like a later model, 2000s, you know, uh, 2010 kind of model. Probably isn't going to have that. I don't know exactly when they stopped putting these on there. Uh, but uh, if it doesn't say phono, it probably doesn't have a preamp built into it. So what you're going to end up having to do is buy something like this. Now, the, the reason why I have this as well as this is because I actually prefer the sound quality out of this one. And again, I'll kind of get into that a little bit more. But with a, with a phono preamp, this can range from $15 to hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of dollars, depending on how... Uh, expensive you want to go or how fancy you want to go um, anyway so anyways you just plug in it's going to come with a little power plug so i just plug that in and, it, and one thing if you have the option some uh, stereos have this ac outlet where you can plug things in i have i plug mine my photo in there so that when i turn on my stereo let me do that real quick i'll get power to this and I don't have to power this separately or plug it in separately it comes on as soon as it comes you know as soon as I plug it into there or excuse me power the system so that's just a bonus if you have that option that's always a nice you know bonus or you can plug in like your CD player like I have my CD player running into it and my phone notes when I turn this on all of that powers up at the same time so kind of a cool thing if you if you have that option uh, so anyways, going to the photo preamp, so same thing, you're going to have a ground right here, so you're going to want to plug your ground in, tighten that up a little bit, 
and then you're going to want to run your input, which is coming from your turntable, right into that little guy. Right there, so you have those two. Then you're going to run your output. You're going to have to have a cable, and typically if you buy one of these, it's going to come with an output cable, but if not, you can get a really cheap one at like a Walmart, Radio Shack kind of place, or you can go... If you're into, you know, buying, upgrading, you know, you just apply it by a simple red and white stereo cable and you run that into your, now, uh, uh, you run this into an input. Now, <clears throat> in this case, since I have the phono option, I'm not going to run this into phono because you're going to get crazy, crazy sound out of it. It's going to be either like feedback or it's going to be like really loud or you don't want to do that. So I basically run this into my CD input. <clears throat> Um, or I, I mean, there's so many different inputs on here, mini disc, that kind of stuff. So I just run mine into a, a another auxiliary auto audio input that I, that I don't use. And I just select that option when I want to listen to my LPs. But, um, that's it. This thing, like I said, there's no power button on this. So I just have it plugged in. I turn on my stereo. It all comes on. Everything works great. Now, turn, if you're a beginner to a turntable, do not get overwhelmed with, with buying like super fancy stuff. I wouldn't even get overwhelmed in trying to buy a $50 Chrono preamp right now. Unless it's just something you, you've kind of gotten out of vinyl for a while and you're back into it and you, you kind of know and understand the process. If your goal right now is to listen to LPs and that's all you care about, then just, again, I'll drop the Pile Pro link in there. Just get the Pile Pro preamp. It works great. It's not it's not tip-top quality, but it's not bad. It's just it's just good. It's just good enough. Um, you have to think of vinyl listening like a car, you know. You can go out and buy a, just a standard sedan car with, you know, a nice stereo in it, and it has good gas mileage and all that. If you want to soup it up and get, like, turbocharged and you want to get you know, leather seats and you want to get all this fancy stuff, you're going to have to pay for it and you're going to have to customize it. And that's very similar to how listening to vinyl is. Um, I particularly, I was using this preamp in the Pile Pro for a long time. Um, it sounded good, but it, did, it was just, to me, after a while, I kind of just felt like there was something missing. And when I upgraded this, I just really liked the sound. The, it got a little bit more warmth out of it when I used this preamp. And um, so I'm really happy with it. I still feel like it's a budget move. It's not super expensive. I've seen preamps that, you know, have really good ratings for two, dollars $300. That's great. Maybe one day down the road I'll do that. But it's not a priority of mine. So um, I just stick with this one here. But um, you don't get caught up in like, I got to buy the super expensive turntable and the super expensive stereo. Just go out and you'd be surprised what you can find. You know, if you get a, if you go on uh, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, garage sales, and you can find just a nice standalone turntable, um, you know, get a nice standalone turntable. Just make sure it works. But don't, don't get caught up in like, I got to get the Technics 1200. I got to get, you know, this. $2,000 stereo and this crazy even put I mean don't don't do that just just get yourself something that works whatever you can get to get going and then um, You can kind of build on everything as it goes and I'll, I'll probably do like a I've kind of done an intro introduction to vinyl already uh, video But um, I kind of want to get more in depth into the equipment and audio equipment because I know a lot of people are just really overwhelmed when they first start collecting but Ultimately, as far as the photo preamp, that's that's a very good understanding, right? A basic understanding um, how this all works is you either get a stereo that has one built in, your turntable may have one built in, or you can get a standalone little box like this and run it through that and then run it into your stereo. Um, if you're not sure, <clears throat> again, check with your, your turntable to see if it's built in. If it's built in, then you don't have to worry about this. You just go straight into your stereo. If it's not built in, check if your stereo has one built in. If this doesn't have one built in, then you're going to need one of these to get going. Other than that, you should be good to go and you should be able to play. If you have any questions, please drop them in my uh, uh, box, um, you know, my comment box below. I'll do my best to answer them. I'm try usually try to answer them pretty quick. Uh, if you haven't uh, already seen my other videos, please check them out. I have tons and tons of other vinyl videos, vinyl related, hardware uh, related. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. I appreciate y'all watching. And uh, thanks again. Y'all have a good weekend.